Yeah. You gotta work. You gotta work. Grind, shine, it's mine. Gotta show everybody it's my time. Get in here, you gotta work. Grind, shine, never mind who talking down, cause they lie. Don't talk, you gotta work. Let the conversation begin. This is Let's Talk with your host, Carl Lee. This is Carl Lee. We're here to talk about it today. One of the things that I want to make sure is, is that we cover a lot of different topics that are out there that everybody's talking about. The biggest one, high school transfers. That's the biggest thing going today. We've I, I had the luxury of coaching at South Charleston High School for a year. Many of you all have criticized that and talked bad about that, which is which is okay. That is what we're looking to do. At some point, you will be able to text, call in, do something to be able to critique who I am, what I am. And all I really wanted to do is get a chance for everybody to talk about the topics. We text about it, we eat, we, we're on Facebook, we're on all these different outlets, but let's just talk about it. I've got a, I've got a good crew here in front of me that's gonna help me out. Uh, the first one, I'll have him introduce himself. Um, well, I'll give his name out and I'll let him kind of give us a little bit of a background. Hollis Lewis is my, so so far, my greatest co-host. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, so I'm Hollis Lewis, um, former judge here in Kanawha County. Um, you know, I'm very active in the community, um, professor, um, and, you know, former coach for a couple years anyway. And a former player of mine. Yeah, and a former player of Coach Lee. <laughs> yeah. And we have Jonathan, Jonathan Pinson here. Give us a little bit of background that you got for us, Jonathan. Well, thank you, Jonathan Pinson. I have the privilege of serving in the West Virginia legislature out of Mason County, District 17. That's parts of Mason County and Jackson County. I have the privilege of coaching and uh, am the proud father of five. There you go. I had five. Uh, it was five kids in our family, too, so I know what that's like. And the next gentleman, I got a chance to meet this young man a long time ago and uh, has a great son that plays or has played in the NFL. Uh, Michael Switzer, give us a little bit of background about yourself. Well, I'm probably most known around here as being <laughs> Ron Switzer's uh, father, but I do have five other kids um, who played sports and I've spent uh, probably the, you know, better part of my life on fields in the last at least 30 years covering um, sports and participating in that as a uh, photographer, graphic designer, and um, supporter of um, the largely uh, George Washington High School and their sports uh, teams. All right, yes, sir. so guys, let's just jump right into it. Okay, let's 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 talk about this. Okay, all sports now. Everybody's transferring. I go I go to high, I go to South Charleston High School first year coaching. Um, have a horrible season. Um, my fault. I take all the blame as as head football coach. You take all the blame, all the blame. And following that season, prior to that season, a couple of players left. Great players that could have been beneficial for us. Changes the whole dynamic of of the team. I decide to leave after one season, and a whole host of kids are deciding to leave. The high school now, putting it in a very difficult situation. The school is will be challenged by, by putting a football team on the field. What is going on? Who Who is the problem? Is this about who the coach is? Because I know I, I read a lot of stuff on Facebook before I got off of it. Um, and, you know, it was me. It was my fault. It, you know, the kids are leaving. They don't like me. They don't do this. They don't do that. You know, I'm just trying to figure out. What the pulse is, who's causing it, who's choosing to leave, who's letting these kids go, are coaches recruiting them to a degree that they want to come to another school? What happened to all the teamwork, the, the community, um, bonds, all of that? So, Hollis, you start us off. Give, tell me what you think. Well, well, I, I'm going to, um, before I make my comment, I'd like to pass to uh, Delegate 
Pinson, uh, and he can give us maybe a background far as the uh, recent legislation that passed that allows kids to transfer. Then I can, you know, make my comment just to give people, uh, a, you know, a, a political or legal background to how okay. they're able to do that. Well, I appreciate that. So what we're what we'll be talking about to a large degree is House Bill twenty eight twenty, which passed the West Virginia Legislature uh, in. Uh, I guess, March of, of this year. So just a few months ago, House Bill 2820. And uh, that, that bill does two things. Number one, it allows students who attend a private school, if their private school does not offer a sport, they can play for the school district in which they live. The second thing that House Bill 2820 does is it allows for a student to have access to one transfer with within their four years of high school eligibility. So between their freshman year and their senior year, they're allowed to transfer one time to a different school without penalty. We know that uh, in the past transfers have happened, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And uh, oftentimes these transfers weren't governed by any type of rules or regulations. But according to the WVSSAC, if they transferred for any reason other than an actual address change, so any reason other than the fact that they moved or their family moved, then they were required to sit out for 365 days. That was the old law. That was the old law. Old the law. new law allows that transfer to take place one time without the 365-day suspension. So with a, with a brief overview of the intent of the legislation, I'll pass back to you, yeah. and I think what we'll probably talk about is how do we feel like the legislation will actually be utilized? I can describe what the intent was, yeah. but how will it actually be utilized? And, and we know, like, generally when we have uh, laws and statutes and things of that nature, there's always an intent, but how it's, uh, you know, worked out within uh, judicial hearings and uh, how people use it and manipulate it can be one thing. As far as to answer your question regarding uh you know, high school kids transferring. Um, I think what's happening now is that, you know, people are not making decisions based on loyalty, community, and things of that nature. They're making decisions about, you know, what's best for them. I don't necessarily fault the kids for doing that. Um, I've seen two situations. Uh, when I was at South Charleston, we had a situation in which we had a young man. He was a he was an 11th grade JV player. Everybody in here plays sports, and if you play in JV in 11th grade football, you're not going anywhere. Your career you might as well <laughs> pretty much hang it up. He comes to South Charleston. He's a top-rated player in his position. He has several you know, uh, scholarship offers at D2 level, and they even have a Power 5 preferred walk-on offer. Same Similar situation, we had a kid at South Charleston transferred out. He's middle-of-the-road guy, You know, maybe a, maybe a Division II player, maybe. And he goes to another school, has an amazing year. He got a Division One offer. So I think that, you know, when we look at far as the kids' side, they're making decisions about what's going to benefit them in the future. When we look at the administrative and coaching side, the job has changed now. Um, you're not you're no longer just the, you know, the old rough, gruff coach that can, you know, that dictates what goes on throughout the community. You have to acquiesce to I don't want to say to to their needs, but you have to be cognizant of kind of what's going on as far as what the kids are viewing, what they're looking at, what their needs. You have to build a program, and recruiting is a part of that, unfortunately. All right, so let me, let me ask this question, Michael, to you. Having a great high school son, and assuming his team was not winning, would in in the era that we're in now, would you move him? Do you think you would take well, we, him to a school that would win? We 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 talked about all of that, but I, I guess in in Ryan's case, like he grew up and was part of teams that were winning, mm -hmm. and so it was you know hard to argue. Oh well, we're going to leave. But uh, his and I don't mean to cut you off. I think yeah. that's an unfair question. We can't say just not winning. We'll right. say well, if they, I, I, you didn't well, give well, me. Like, you didn't give me a chance. We'll say you know if they, it they were going to change his position or right. something. Let it, right. Right. Let it finish. Let okay. it finish. Well, Let he, it finish. he actually did have. It's very. It's really interesting because when Ryan was coming out of uh, uh, John Adams Middle School, I mean, we were approached by 
at least five mm. high school coaches. I have written illegal I have a writ- recruiting. Baby. I have I have a written letter <laughs> from one. Well, at Jeez. that time, the the rule was that you could decide which high school you yeah. were going to. And in fact, Coach Ian, I mean Coach Edwards, and I had been friends lot when I, back when I was in high school. And he and I were talking outside of GW one night, and we were talking about the turf on the field. And he said, "So." Is Ryan ever going to get to play here um, other than being on a visiting team? <laughs> and I went, Steve, man, I mean, he's a South Hills Patriot. But when Ryan got to GW and he was, you know, all the hoopla and everything coming out of middle school for him, and suddenly he was not the starter, he was not the full-time starter and all that kind of thing, um, but we were winning. And I had to impress upon him that – his time would come that he was a freshman that everything had to you know run its course and this is what he had to do to mature and all of that kind of thing so it's hard to say if we weren't winning but i will say this after his junior or after his sophomore year um we were approached by several uh, prep schools and so forth because they had seen him at seven on seven and things of that nature. And so his recruiting to that was the sales was what the sales, uh, you know, you've got to bring him out of West Virginia or else he's not going to be recruited. And I had the conversation with one coach. I, I said, I would rather him be one of one here than one of 50 That's a good perspective. somewhere else. I, I, okay, so let me make let me make for for everybody who's listening. This is going to be a fight. <laughs> like I, I, you know, we want to make this because we're this is this is the show. Let's talk about it, all right? Yeah. And it can get heated, and it can get it can go in different directions. But I want it to go that way. Okay, so I, I know Hollis has something to say yeah. to this i want to make this comment before you say it because i know it's because i know yeah. it's going to get under your skin a little bit at 62 you could not have ever got me to go to dunbar g-dub charleston high stonewall like those were your enemies like those <laughs> right. those were right. your enemies right yeah. and so i can't and, and, and to your point where, like, you can't coach a certain kind of way. I coached you. You So, clearly, you should have came to me and said, Coach, high school coaching is not going to be your thing. I'd have respected it. You know what I'm saying? Because you know who I am. And I am that guy because, to me, the discipline that comes in sports, there is no place that it is outgrown. There is no place. Being on time. Dressing like everybody's like you're supposed to all of those kinds of things the respect that you have for each and every coach those things matter because Going to college on a college scholarship playing on Sunday is Very few so the only reason for me only reason to, that I see sports n- The need for sports is for the kids who need the discipline, who need that kind of yelling and screaming, because if you're you're buying them Pop-Tarts every morning, I, I'm telling you now, you're going to be buying them a cake, then you're going to be buying them a car. <laughs> that's good you, you're going to have no other choice because that's what they're going to expect for you or I'm not going to play for you. See, hey, Carl, I, I mean, it's hard. I don't argue with – I give people the um, the analogy or the, or the reference of – Go and watch the movie Coach Carter. Absolutely. One of my favorite movies. I don't believe, even though the culture has changed today, I agree with what you, I do not think that you should have transfers coming. I think that you can build, if you do it right, that you can build from within what you you know, have. That's but what you're supposed That's the job that you're supposed to do. Right. Hollis is about to blow up. He's got to say something. Let's <laughs> no, get him in I'm, here. I'm real just quick. saying, I, 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 I don't think you can bring um, sensibilities from 30, 40, and 50 years ago into this climate. Because, and, and I won't say in totality, I think you can bring a portion of that, but you have to make whatever you do cool. And I can mention Dion, and we all know that, right? Yeah, we're going to hit that in a little bit. Dion, but I'll I'll even bring it locally. I play for Coach Edwards. I was a product. I'm a West Side kid who went to GW. Mm -hmm. So I'm a product of probably that first generation of 
transfer. I, mine was academic. It wasn't sports necessarily related. But anyway, Coach Edwards, he is, and we both know him, he's a rough, tumble guy, mm-hmm. particularly the old man. Mm-hmm. I mean, God, I've never been <laughs> cussed so bad in my life. Um, but what <laughs> but what young, young E, we called him Young E Odie, he made it cool. You had the best facilities to what it is now. You had the best uniforms. You, everything was first class. So there's a balance that that took place there. So I could take, you know, I could take the yelling and screaming because I know that I, everything else is going to be cool. It's going to be he, – he really pays attention to the detail of everything. You know what I mean? So I think that if you're going to bring those sensibilities – because Deion Sanders, I know we're going to talk about it, he's an old school coach. If you hear him talk, you hear his – Everything, but he has the cool factor where the uniforms, the facilities, he's bringing in the rappers and all those sort of things. So I think you have to balance it with these kids because they're not, again, you're not landlocked to your neighborhood. You're, you're seeing it all here. So if I'm seeing it at Hurricane, they're, oh man, they're doing this. They got this light show. They got the music pumping. They're doing this. And I'm over here and I got, we got two uniforms and I'm getting cussed out all day and I'm running up downs and I'm on this dirt grass field. I don't want to be here. You know, and to, and, to, and to the point, the question, I, you know, that we asked Mr. Switzer, to me, you can maybe take being on a, a winning team and not playing as much. But it's the fact that, that if, if I'm a kid and I'm playing out of position, I'm not getting fair looks. Even if I'm on that winning team, it's like, man, maybe I can go here and play. Because if not, even if I don't have a scholar, even if I'm not going, not, not going to college or I'm not going to NFL, at least I could be a superstar in high school. So I think those are the sort of things that a modern coach has to consider. So I'm going to I'm going to just yeah. push yes, sir. back about the, the, the modern culture versus old school culture, because I think that there's a chance I might be the youngest guy in the room. <laughs> so I, when I consider the culture, even even in today, and I don't disagree with what you're saying about uh, being able to see it on social media and coaches, uh, God love them, coaches trying to uh, manage the field and manage the athlete and manage the parents in the stands and the yeah, expectation big... of fundraise, uh, fundraise and the expectation of uh, administrators, you know, and trying to answer to the administrators of the school system or the board of education. So, so we get that coaches are really being uh, taken through the ringer, and we get that that athletes are different now. But I'm going to offer maybe a different perspective outside the the experience and, and the perspective in this room, and that's we've got to be reminded that most of West Virginia is rural. So in our rural communities, that mentality that you spoke of, Carl, that I'm not going over that. I don't care how good their baseball team is, how good their football team is. They're my opponent. They're my adversary. I'm going to go over there twice in my high school career, and I'm going to steal a victory from their home turf both times I go over there. Uh, so so that's a real part of this as well. Now, that works, that works, and I think it's a real aspect of this in the rural parts of our yeah, state. I agree with that. But now when you get into some of these pockets where you've got schools and and population uh, centers, so you have schools right next to schools, that's where we get into more of the, well, I can I can more easily transfer over uh, to South Charleston or from Winfield to Hurricane or, you know, because of the population center, I don't know about if that, if that, uh, adversary mentality or that rivalry is as strong and, and maybe it's a good thing you know we've got kids that are broadening their neighborhoods on social media and they're friends with people that go to that school all those kind of things but I do want to push back because I, I've heard it right I was a champion of this legislation and I was a champion of the of the transfer I want to push back and push back very firmly that what we passed in March of this year in our state legislature is going to ruin high school sports in the state of West Virginia. Because we understand, and we've already had a lengthy conversation, that these transfers and this recruiting and, and all this, this has taken place for years and years and years. Yeah. So what we have passed writes it into code that a child uh, somewhere between freshman year and senior year 
has one opportunity to do it right without all the backroom discussions and the wheeling and dealing. They can do it without penalty. So for for some, and, and maybe not in this room, but certainly others, oh, we've ruined, you know, it's going to turn into college sports. I think we're a long ways from there, and there are people who are going to who are going to hold back that flood. I don't think it's going to have the detriment that some would like to uh, try to drum up that it will have. Yeah. All right, well, let, let's do this while we got a chance. We'll take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll we'll talk about it some more. You're listening to Let's Talk with Carl Lee. Sponsorship opportunities are available. Email Let's Talk at promessage.com or call 304 342 8131. For more information, visit WCHSnetwork.com slash Let's Talk or like us on Facebook, Let's Talk with Carl Lee. Now, back to the conversation. If you're just joining us, you missed a segment that where we just started to kind of fight a little bit about some issues, especially the high school transfers. We'll we'll follow back up with some of that. I've got Jonathan Pinson. Um, I have Hollis Lewis and Michael Switzer. We've all been around the table here and had our own opinions. So I'm going to jump back in just because I'm on the front mic and I I get the benefit of, of, of making everybody mad. So it seems to me, okay, it seems to me that the the, the consensus here is is that we're 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 on a track that we we must go. Okay? So simple question. Where is sports then? What what does sports become? Because if we're allowing what we're allowing and we see what it is. Now, we're talking about South Charleston High School struggling to fill the team because kids are leaving. Which I don't think is good for high school no, sports. No, which all. is which again, wh- when we when I played sports, Sports was, a, it was about community. It was about your team. It was about all that. To whatever degree we, wherever we are now, wherever we classify it as now, when did it change and how is it going to be good for sports? If you, if you lose a South Charleston High School football, if kids go to teams to win, and they leave places. I mean, we've got kids who have South Charleston has had kids leave to go to Sissonsville, Herbert Hoover. Now, come on. Now, that that is not happening anywhere. No one's thinking that's happening. I get it. I get it to, to, to South Hills, G-Dub. I get it to Cap. I get it to Riverside. I don't see Hoover and Sissonsville in that picture. I'm sorry. It just does not fit. You know, like it or not, it just does not fit. For a kid from South Charleston to go there, so what do we what do we want sports to do? And I'm, I'm, I want to ask everybody, what do we want sports to do for you? If you had a kid right now, eleventh grade, decent player, not a great player, decent player, he's playing for a high school. Don't know if college is possible. Maybe D two, maybe D three, but. Not even really sure. What do you want him to get from sports? I, I, again, I think um, as far as to answer the question, I, I have a daughter. She's in ninth grade. She plays lacrosse at GW. Um, she's a decent player, decent athlete. Ultimately, I think you know academics and what she pursues, as far as with her, you know, her mind and everything, is going to be her ultimate success. So, what I would want her to get at this point is to get camaraderie. Uh, within her teammates to make sure that she understands how to work within the team. Um, ho, 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 did, ho, ho. What's that? Te- <laughs> teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah. Teamwork and, and work within my team. Yeah, understand how to win and lose. There you go. But, wow. Yeah, but. Wow. That that sounds that, that but, sounds a little strange but those to me. Are but the, those are the sensibilities that, was, that my dad passed to me. So that's the same thing I'm going to pass to her. But I'm not – uh, naive enough to un- to 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 I understand that that's not everybody's sensibility. And to answer your question, you talked about rural community versus more urban communities. Is that when we talk about youth and biddy ball, these kids are playing together. So, like we had mentioned before, 
I'm playing baseball with kids in my neighborhood to go to my elementary school. Now you might be playing baseball, soccer with kids from all over the county. And in some cases, you might be playing baseball and everything with kids from all over the state. So if there, there may be a situation in which my skill set or I have, may have a friend or a couple of buddies that maybe go to Hoover, they go to Winfield, go to Cincinnati, schools that we would never consider back in the day transferring to, but that may be a better fit or maybe a better option. And in addition, we're thinking also that I wouldn't necessarily want to go to a smaller school because I may not get to expose you or I may not um, be on the biggest stage. But now even that's different because of social media. So if I go to Sensonville or single A school and I shine and I'm scoring touchdowns and I'm the man, I'm going to get attention because of this. So I still have the opportunity to maybe even play at the next level. So the sensibility and how they're thinking about it is drastically different than two, three, four generations ago thought about it. So I think you have to consider that when you're thinking about today's kids in sports. I, my question, okay, so I went to Marshall and I won eight or nine games in four years. So Virginia Tech was looking at me and then they were like, oh, no, we, 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 you know, you can walk on. I didn't have money to walk on. I was satisfied going to Marshall because I was going to play. So I don't understand, like, when you start talking about trying to get, you know, you, you, go, to, you go to a single A or double A school and you want to get to college. So you got, you got all your stuff. You're putting all your stuff out there online. You are who you are no matter where you play. No, that's not necessarily true. I, I don't and, agree. And, with I, that. and well, I know yeah. we had a sto we had a yeah. story about we had a story about a couple of folks who which are which are situational kind of things. But in the most, it, it, to me, I believe that a player, and you you've heard this, players play, yeah. players play, okay, <laughs> players play. Players play. Yeah. They don't care where they're at. I don't get it. Like, but, I, I okay, don't, I don't, here, here's the thing though. Out of high school, you're you play football. You ran track. You play basketball. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So you're you're a, a really good athlete. So, but you don't necessarily get the looks coming out of high school. So you go to Marshall. In that era, those coaches who were possibly recruiting you from Virginia Tech probably maybe never saw you play again. But in today's area, those same coaches say, "Oh, he's he's okay. Let's give let's invite him prefer walk on." You say, "Nah, I'm going to take the full scholarship of Marshall." You go to Marshall, you ball out. Those same coaches at Virginia Tech are seeing you on ESPN. They're seeing you on Twitter. Like, hold up, he can really play. Let's give him another shot. Let's holler back at him. So that's what goes on now. But, so you can't discount that. But I'm going to. It, 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 it might. It, it might entice no you to go to back to like. Hold on. I'm, no, I'm going to go big no, time. All I need. All I wanted. All I needed was the lines. All I needed was, you know, the the goalposts. And you give me another uh, ten guys. I was going to ball. I was going to play. And and I can't even. You know, nothing against single A or double A ball. Nothing against that. Yeah. I would. I. I and because I didn't get to go to Virginia Tech, which, which is where I was going to go, whether or not they saw me at Marshall, there was no, there was no change. I'm not leaving but you Marshall. you don't know that. No, I wasn't leaving but Marshall. But I'm saying, you don't guys know quit, that. Guys quit and left at Marshall all the time. But if that, if that same coach said, man, look, you've been balling out at Marshall. You, you, hey, look, man, I think you come start. We're going to offer you the full mm -mm. scholarship. Mm -mm. And, you know, your day, we're going to, you know, we, we got the payola for you. Too. I'm not leaving. Here, here's the thing. Now. With no money involved. With no money involved. <laughs> okay? like With clear. no money involved. Let's clear five. I'm clear just five. playing. Just, well, just yeah. jokes, people. Full I'm just right. saying. <laughs> just jokes. I, yeah. I would not have left Sonny Randall, Bob Pruitt. I would have not left being coached by those guys. Because to me, first Sonny Randall had played in the league. Bob Pruitt goes on and becomes great, one of the greatest yeah, coaches sure. ever. Okay? So he's my DB coach. I'm smart enough to learn and and look at the surroundings of who's touching me, who's teaching me. I'm not, why am I leaving a, a guy that's an all pro? That's presentism. Mm, that's presentism. Mm. You're not speaking like an 18 year old, a 19 year old. I can't, I can't You're pronounce not, that word. I can't spell it. So, <laughs> so I, I'm going to act as though I don't even know what it is. So, so <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing though. If you think about, if you think about what you're talking about, and like we we've we've kind of come full circle because you're saying 
I'm not leaving. Nope. I'm bleeding green and white. Yep. I'm I'm here. Pruitt's here. I'm not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. And you did get recruited, and you didn't go. You didn't you didn't go to Virginia Tech, and boy, I commend you for that. By the way, <laughs> so you didn't go to Virginia Tech, and you still got drafted. Yes. So so we heard Ryan got offers, and he could have he could have went somewhere, and he could have been one of fifteen or one of fifty. And he stays in West Virginia. Because we are producing great athletes. Yes, we are. Had a lot He drafted. stayed in West Virginia. He was one of one. And I don't mean that any disrespect to those that helped him get where he was. Right. But he went on to play collegiate ball, went on to play professional ball. And and it worked out for Ryan. It worked out for you. So the other thing that I'll and, and this is interesting because we're talking about we're talking I, I'm talking to collegiate sports players. I'm talking about. I'm talking to those that are very uh, close to professional, the, the professional ranks. You played there. You got a son that played there. But we've got to remember in this conversation that 99.9 percent of the kids, that's not what they're going to get. That's my. That's it. That's it. That's so, what I was waiting to hear because because of that, what's the move? You're not going to get any more. You get nothing more transferring anywhere. College sports is not going to be your thing. So So you're assuming. No, I'm just going on what you said. You're assuming they're going to transfer, though. Well, I mean, give me. I mean, the night. Here's my. Here's my point. 41. (laughs) Okay. But so so here's my point. Here's my point. For the 99.9 percent of kids that aren't going to go to play D2 or D1 college, D3 college, for for those kids, I don't think that they and their parents. Now, now maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think that they or their parents think, you know what, if I go and play for Ripley instead of Ravenswood, then I'm going to college. I think a lot of their parents are interested in the structure and the discipline and get my kid to listen and get my kid to work hard. I think a lot of them are. Hey, John, are I'm, John, I'm going to disagree oh, with you my on gosh, that. I'm glad. I, I, no, I'm saying that the majority don't, and we talked about this before we went in, that you like have a million high school football players. I mean, it, that stat's thrown out every year, okay? And less than 1% go on to play Division One college football. And then another less than 1% go on to play one, I still call it one double A, you know. I mean, it, most don't even consider. And I when I talk to uh, high school uh, parents and athletes about the recruiting process and try to give them some understanding of it and so forth, and I will ask them, I said, do you want to play college football or do you just want to run out of a helmet somewhere? And my point, and they'll look at me, and I'm like, because there's a lot of places that you could play college football because you're a good athlete and you could do that. You just may not be taking a charter flight to the game. Right. They don't, the but they all believe <laughs> they all believe that they're they're going to take that charter flight to the game, and they don't look at it like, well, I could play at Concord, I could play at West Virginia State. It further my education. Oh, I mean, all of that kind of thing. They're they really truly, and their parents are pushing that. Well, my kid, you know, scores um, twenty five touchdowns in the MSAC, so he's going to be. And I had these discussions with my son. That's what I'm saying. We didn't start out thinking, oh, well, you're going to play at Notre Dame. You're going to play it. No, I mean, and I made sure he understood that. Yeah, you're the best player in West Virginia, but there's the best player in Florida. There's the best player in North Carolina. Okay, so have perspective. I think what Carl's I I think perspective has been lost on that. It's not trying to reach your dream, you know, that you don't have dreams, you don't have goals and that kind of stuff, but I think the perspective has been lost. I, I, let me, I, I would agree with Delegate Pence because what I think that we fail to do, we fail to consider that sports is some people's education. Yes. Um, regarding not necessarily, you know, it's going to teach you history, math, and science, but the lessons that you're learning from sports is going to be the things that carry you over. I know specifically from my high school days, 
I don't remember too much of what happened in those classes, but I could tell you a whole bunch of what happened on that field. <laughs> Not just the wins and losses, but the practices, the lessons that I got, the praises that I got from the coaches, the cussings I got from the coaches. So we're fair to consider, I know like the European system, they'll have situations in which you go to this school to play basketball and you're going to specialize that and they're going to work your academics around that in soccer and, and so forth. So for some of us, Sports is the conduit that's going to lead you to be a, a good employee, that's going to lead to academics, that's going to lead you to be a good wife, husband, and citizen, and so on. So we have to consider that sports play that role as well. And, and, to, and to that point, one of the things as, as in coaching and coaching at West Virginia State, one thing, what's crazy is kids have no idea High school kids have no idea how good West Virginia State and that conference is today. They have no idea. They're thinking somewhere outside of the state, okay? And I, I am the biggest dreamer in the room, okay? Like, I'm the guy who's seven years old saying I'm going to play on Sunday, and I'm half an inch tall, okay? So I get it. But for that percent of kids who are not going to make it, they need – being on time. They need the discipline. And so that is what sports, if we, t if we, if we lax in sports in that discipline area, look at the kids who are in athletics, black, white, green, rich, poor, whatever, whatever. Look at the kids who are adamantly about sports. I am that kid. I am that kid who. I was on the mindset of I didn't want grades to I didn't want to back up. Yeah, now that's stupid. Sure. Like I didn't want to back up. I didn't want I wanted to force myself to work out. I didn't want to do school. You know, my first year at Marshall, first semester, I'm one seven. Sonny Randall's going down my throat saying, son, you're not gonna be eligible. All that mattered to me was trying to get eligible. I get it now. That was all that was wrong, but I didn't want to back up. I wanted Sunday that bad. And what I learned from Sonny, I was late. I was late one time in four years for Sonny Randall. The very first meeting, I'm the closest recruit to Huntington. And I'm the last recruit to show up. I walk in the meeting, hey, I, I'm the guy. What happens is he goes off on me like, <laughs> like he cussed me. And I'm like thinking, well, wait a minute. I thought I was a good. I thought, you know, I was going to get something special. No, I got nothing. I got cussing. And he told me, he said, son, you will never be late again. And for four years, I was never late again. So to me, I think we have to look at sports as the alternative for those who are not academically sound. And we have to still, you got to be in class. You got to be in class on time. You got to do your homework and turn it in on time. You got to do all those things. Why should we soften up sports? I, I don't think you have to soften it up. I just think you have to balance. And I think if you're coming from a certain perspective, there is a learning curve that has to be had. And you're dealing with a new generation of, of, of kids where their attention, be a fine, I'm holding on my phone for those who can't see, their attention is, uh, span is different. Their sensibilities are different. How they communicate or lack thereof so we is change? different. So we change. I'm not saying change, but I think you have to. I think you have to adapt, and I think you have to consider those things because you can't go in there how you were coached. That does not work no more. And, and so here's the thing: for the coaches that think in West Virginia, they're going to give out pop tarts, they're going to give out cakes, they're going to give out cars, they're going to recruit. And they're not going to be disciplined. And they're not going to run a tight ship. I don't believe those coaches are successful. 100%. I, so I, so I, even if they have the talent come. But if they're not if they're not running a program with transfer or without transfer rule, I believe they're that. not going to be successful. I, 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 agree with that. I, I do believe that to a degree. To a degree. Depends on where they go. Just depends on, like, you know, Wayne Harris left South Charleston with the Huntington. Huntington's already good. He goes out there and, and is spectacular, right. and 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 he 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 changes that that team. Okay, Hurricane. They get a few players from South Charleston from other places. They got better. 
You know, now, duly note, I did, I tried to get Coach Mays to be part of the show. Um, I, I, I communicated with him to see if he'd be part of it because I, the thing about him, he was at one point when he was at South Charleston, he didn't recruit. He, he wrote an article about recruiting and how bad he thought it was and then turns around and gets the hurricane, okay, and recruits, okay? So part of my leaving South Charleston was because I'm not going to recruit high school athletes. I don't know what I'm recruiting them for. I'm not I I co I recruited in 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 college. And I'm looking for college athletes. Pro scouts come out and look for pro prospects. There is no such thing as a high school prospect. Well, I, I don't think it's <laughs> recruiting, but I think you have to make the program appealable to today's kids i would say like again i'll just go to gw because that's where i went i'm familiar with that program outside of coaching other places when you walk up there when you walk to the locker room it's like damn this is excuse me this is a <laughs> you all right? like, this is a, a I, like look at the locker room wow you got it oh the weight dang look at that weight room what's this outside it's, it, it has the hall of fame and you got all the play i could be there all oh, these the gay ray white ryan switcher players I, I get that so it's it's the it's it's the it's the um it's everything that's about the program that has to be appealable. Oh, and you win and you got the cool uniforms. So you have to consider that thing. You know, I, even, like, even like even uh, like the Nike and the and the Under Armour, you got to consider that now as a head coach. I, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think looking good, you play good. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm with that. So I, all that kind of stuff. That and again, Stevie gets it. And 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 I and I'd love to get a chance to talk to him because I'm curious about how he thinks coaching today versus coaching before because he's made that transition easily. You know, he's still successful just like he was before. So I think that is a I think that is something that is magical really cuz I don't know how he I Well, I'll, tell, I'll tell you how Stevie, I mean, to get Stevie's credit and he is a friend of mine. He Steve is consistent. He yeah. used methods that his dad, who was obviously mm -hmm. successful, used. But, I mean, to borrow what Hollis was saying, he has adapted. And um, But his consistency also comes from his coaching staff. Like, he's had the same guys on his coaching staff. I mean, there's three or three of them that have been there as long as he's been there. And that's built over time. Um, but he's been able to, because of the area that he's in, you know, he's gotten his fair share of, um, you know, really good athletes and kids that have grown up there, but there is a standard and that's why I yeah. go by. I mean, again, I don't think you, I don't think you start to lower the bar as far as your standard goes. That's what I meant about coach Carter. I mean, I think you, you set that bar and then you have to bring everybody, you know, up to it. Um, play, you mentioned Huntington. I mean, you know, they get, they're already successful. So it's easier for one really good player to kind of jump into that fold. Whereas if you take like a great player and he goes to, you know, a not so good team, I don't think the, you know, it, it turns out the same. And I don't think they're going to get any more recruited because they may get, that's what is crazy. I mean, they're not going to make any college's needle move because they suddenly, you know, are rushing for 3,000 yards and they're playing at double-A whatever school. Or single-A whatever single. school. Right. All right, well, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. You're listening to Let's Talk with Carl Lee. Sponsorship opportunities are available. Email let's talk at promessage.com or call 304-342-8131. For more information, visit wchsnetwork.com slash Let's Talk or like us on Facebook, Let's Talk with Carl Lee. Now, back to the conversation. All righty, we'll close the show out of here shortly with uh, closing out with a, a conversation about Deion Sanders and the situation trying to, trying to tie in transfer the transfer portal with transfers in high school. What's the difference? One right, one wrong. Because 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 I I'm thinking for sure that high school is wrong. 
Okay, I'm. I, 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 I made it very clear. It's wrong. Okay, clear, clear. Like okay, so you know, th- th- there's no question about it to me because you know, what are you running from? Yeah. You know, what are you running from? S- sit, sit in it, and 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 because what are you gonna do when you get a job and you don't like the job? You're stuck. You got to sit in it. What are you gonna quit? Because that's what we're building. I, I'm just saying. I, I disagree. I, I, I disagree. disagree with that, Tom. I'm because with you, because <laughs> here, here's, the, here's the thing. We're talking about kids 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. And there's a development lot. Development age. Development right? age, the yeah. Development age. So but, what but they do on. then <laughs> is likely what they're going to be. Right? Hold on. Hold on. Let me play <laughs> okay. this out. Right. We're talking about kids 15, 16, 17, 18 years old that cannot control a whole lot of their life. There is a lot of circumstances that could cause a child, I remind you, we're talking about children. Yes, we, yes, we are. To have to transfer that have nothing to do with, I'm not playing at A, so I want to go to B. I am totally fine. Let me make it very, very clear. I am totally fine if you have to go. But see. I'm not sure if any South Charleston High School athlete had to leave. Okay. They wanted to leave. So with They wanted to leave because they didn't like the structure. They didn't like that the possibility of not winning. They didn't like the staff. They didn't like me. Whatever the case may be. They didn't like the uniforms. They didn't like the helmets. They didn't like the shoes. Whatever the case is. They left. Okay? So without the legislation that was passed in March though, they could not leave without being dishonest or without actually moving residents because the only way that before this legislation the only way that they could have transferred to another school even if they had to was to change their residence to move their house or to be dishonest on paperwork and just pretend like they moved and do we you, know okay so we know so, a bunch so, of them that did that i was gonna say do you really think that the this like parents don't they won't Beat that rule. Oh no, I get it. Okay. I get it. So, but but with the legislation, we we do get to capture the kids that have to move, and we preserve twenty five percent of their high school career. I know an they athlete, don't have to sit out. I know an athlete from South Charleston who left, left the state, and is back. Now, why? Why are you back? What, like I thought you moved. I, I, I thought you moved. But uh, I, but again, just dodging the road. Yeah, I thought you moved. But again, you you're you're moving for opportunity because the three the some of the athletes that left South Charleston High School got Division One offers, and I'm talking Power Five. Div, no, and I'm not even saying one of them's offer because he's an underclassman, but two signed Power Five Division scholarships, and they're going to be paying at a these big schools. So but, it's not about running from something. Maybe you're just running to opportunity now, and. And the legislation gives you the opportunity to do that without being underhanded. The one, like, okay, so let me it, let me make, yeah. let me let me let me make this clear. Okay, okay. Yeah. The, the University of South Carolina was in South Charleston's building. Gotcha. All right, and he was looking at one of those particular D one players. Okay, I don't care, bro. I don't care where he played. He everything I I first saw him. I first saw him. You know what I said? If all things right, that's a Sunday player. Yeah, but it may not have been that season because of what he felt was transpiring. And if you go and because you can't necessarily argue with the results. No. Because the results are you go somewhere else and you got two kids signing power five division one scholarships. And and from their perspective, they made the right decision because they didn't run from; they ran towards what they consider opportunity. I, I don't. I don't see. I don't. I don't think opportunity exists in 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 your team. I, I, I mean, I got a ton of buddies at, at Marshall University. A ton of buddies. We text every morning. Okay, they're my boys. Right. But my work on the field, winning eight games, my work on the field, the work that I did in offseason, that was mine. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's true. And, and so it didn't make any difference who who was on my team. I was going to work and I put the work in and, and, and got the call. 
We're trying to make it about the, a, a, an opportunity. Do you know what it's like, to, you know, to, to play hard every single game and you're losing and, and, and uh, uh, you're playing well enough, you're playing well enough to be seen, okay? Not taking anything away from playing on a team, you're, you know, with, with, with Ryan playing on a team that's winning because he's willing that team to win. You either are willing a team to win or you're on a team that's not good, but you're playing like you belong somewhere else. And we think the opportunity is being on a team. Okay? No, it is you. You got to be big enough, tall enough, all of these kinds of things that are going to matter. I don't care. I mean, the, you're, the guy that you're talking about, he could potentially be one of the best athletes Ever, and, and, you know, for, for the longest time, could very well be the best specimen. Yeah, but if if out you're there. playing on a losing team, you're playing with players, or, or just say you're just playing on a losing team, and you're not necessarily getting the opportunity. Mindset. Particularly. Mindset. Hold on. No, what I'm saying, though, is again, you got to consider position, too. The position you played was. I'm not saying it's individual because you got to depend on your other guys as well. But I know the position I played, if I'm playing on an in front of an inadequate line, it doesn't matter what I do. It, 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 you know, I'm not going to be able to go to that next level because I'm a quarterback. We've seen it with like Patrick Mahomes, one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. He gets to a Super Bowl, it's throwing darts, but his offense, and this was a couple, couple of Super Bowls ago, He's throwing darts, but his offensive liners and receivers are just not helping him. They should have won that game, but not for those other players who couldn't, who wasn't on his level. So if I'm a player and I'm looking at a team, a program, an organization, and I'm saying to myself, this isn't going to help me. I should be allotted the opportunity through that legislation, 28, uh, 2820, House Bill 2820, to go somewhere else. One and like, time. One, one time. Try, one one time. And like I said, I'm, I don't, maybe our high school kids, they shouldn't have the Louis luggage like Dion, but they may have a nice Jan Sport or Nike bag or something, you know? <laughs> okay, so, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so, and to your point about Dion, okay? Dion's coming in and he's telling you, I'm bringing guys here. You can stay or you can go. Okay? Now, everybody put themselves, everybody in the room put themselves in that seat. Okay? I'm not leaving. He's telling, he's putting a threat out to this team. I already know who Dion is. Yeah. He's a Hall of Famer. He, you know, he's prime. You know, yeah. he he just done this with Jackson State. And they're going to say, like, and he's coming in just like he went to Jackson State. He says, look, I'm bringing them in. They're coming. I'm here. They're coming, right? 41 guys leave. What is that? What? Like, I, like I'm, I, come on, Dion. I'm with you. I'm <laughs> with you. I don't care if you bring another corner, safety, whatever it is. Bro, I'm with you. I'm going to be your starting guy. Where is that? Where is that? Well, I do believe, like in De Dion's case, and I don't know, other than the stuff that you read in news reports or any of that kind of thing, like I do believe that, I mean, a coach does have control over a player to the point of, like, if he doesn't like you, whatever, I mean, he may try to force you out. or And so a kid is going to sit there and go – I don't think that that happens as much in high school because you're talking about high school. If a kid can play in high school, I mean, no, no coach is going to keep him off the field for you know. Yeah. But let's look, okay. So, but but let me ask the question. So, Colorado recruits me, and I go there, and the first team meeting, you know, and I'm listening to all this that Dion's telling me, all the disciplinary things that he's telling me, and everybody thinks like Dion was loose and cool and doing all kinds of crazy things on the field, but all of a sudden now he's this disciplinarian. He wants you on time. He wants to kick the kid out for having the wrong stuff on in the weight room. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he's overboard. So my question is, what is wrong with that? What like is that is Dion wrong? No, I don't think he's wrong. What, okay, but, what, I, cause, but cause, I don't. But but how does a kid? How does a kid go from high school to Colorado? How does a West Virginia athlete 
go to Colorado, University of Colorado, and play for Dion. Help me with that. Well, the first thing he's going to hear is hit that portal. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't think I don't think I don't think Dion's wrong, and I don't, I don't think hard nosed coaching is wrong. But you have got a mentality of students who will thrive at that. They will they will excel under that type of challenge, and and certainly I think that's your nature that you're going to accept that as a challenge. It's going to make you a better athlete. And then you have others that they're wanting something easy. And and you guys know if you're looking for something easy in college sports, I, co- I coach youth wrestling, I coach wrestlers, uh, high school wrestlers, youth wrestlers, and, and I've coached a bunch of kids that think they want to wrestle in, in college. <laughs> and I've coached some kids that's went on to wrestle in college and they realize that it's a, it's a full-time job. So for the kid that's just wanting, as you mentioned earlier, or you mentioned earlier, just wanting to run out of the tunnel and just want to write back home and say, "Hey, I'm on the team," and get you know get <laughs> right. your picture every once in a while, they're not gonna they're not gonna survive under Dion. But what we've got to ask ourselves is, okay, so that that's that that person sitting there, and they hear Dion say, "Hit the portal," and they think, "Man, this ain't for me." So now we've got two decisions. Either that child, that that young adult, that young man playing for Deion Sanders in college football, either, I guess maybe three decisions. Number one, they shouldn't play football anymore. Number two, they should stay on that team and make everybody miserable. Or number three, they should hit the portal. And, and I think to that point, not everybody plays for the same reason. Some people are going to play to they, they're trying to max their their Ryan Switzer, their Carly. They're trying to play to get to the league and maximize everything they got on the field. Some guys are playing because they, you know, this is going to carry them to that degree, and they just want to get uh, to get this football thing over with, so I can start my grad school, my law school. Other guys just want to play, be on the team, run through the helmet, join the frat, drink beer, have fun, and everybody play. And I think we don't consider that That's everybody plays point. for yeah. different reasons. So if you as a coach, if I'm coaching, I have to consider that. And Dion has pretty much made a standard. He wants X type of guy, and that's fine. But this other coach may just want guys who just want to be there. So you have to consider as a coach that if you have that leverage, particularly like in a college situation, you can get the guys you want. If you have a, if you're in a high school situation, you got to take what you get and you got to work around that. And the okay. other thing to mention is these students that are that are getting in the portal and they're transferring. They are continuing their education somewhere. Exactly. So, so whether they go on to play, you know, great football or not, but they are continuing their education. And I think you bring up an excellent point that not everybody's putting on that uniform for the same reason. Yeah. That's an excellent point. But, but when you get a scholarship to college, yes, you got to get your academics, but you're here for football. My question again is the kid who thinks the kid who's just wanting to play football, he's pretty good, gets a D1 offer, goes to spring ball. Okay, comes to training camp. You know training camp. Yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't come to you can't come to training camp and just want to just have fun and hope to graduate with a degree, and I'm not really happy. But that about doesn't. Football. But but there, but the purpose doesn't indicate that they're not going to work hard. It just means that I'm not. I, I'm here for this reason. You're here for that reason. It doesn't. It's, it's not an means indication to the end. Yeah, some people are just taking it like it doesn't mean I'm not going to work hard. I'm not going to. I'm working hard, but I'm not. After this, after I'm done with college, I'm going to get married, go to law school, go to grad school, go to med school, as opposed to trying to fight to play more football. A- a- absolutely, but. You're you're the guy that when when I come in, you're the guy that's going to leave. Dion comes in, you're exactly. going to leave. Okay. And my thing is, well, what were you doing prior to? You're playing football. You're just not. You're you're you just. Yeah. But I was saying you right. can't take your mentality. Like you, I think one of the you can't take your mentality and pit that off on other people. Other people have different ideas and, and considerations when they're playing sports. I was one of I, I like playing, but I knew ultimately my brain is going to be the thing that gets me, not my physical ability. I, I understand that. 
But you you were you were talented enough and you worked hard enough. Like you could you could have given up on football. You could have yeah. gave up on it, but you stayed in it. Okay? And and your success is clear now. But but all of the not and and not taking anything from you, your parents, or anything like That's that. True. But but the football structure in which you went through. Vital. Critical. Vital. And 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 not because it was me, because what I did was what was done to me. And so to me, I, all I can think about, all I could think about, I am that guy's always thinking about football. I'm sure that Ryan's the same exact way. But there are, you know, I was to an extreme that that isn't even fair to even say on the mic in case a kid was listening, because he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to follow my path. But what bothers me is I don't think that they have the discipline. That kid that goes to college doesn't have the discipline that is required at the college level to even fit in. If, On, they, if you, they leave, I mean, you like I, I, I'm saying like high school, the high school kids that are playing yeah. and and or and, and we're talking about that one percent that are trying to go to D1 or D2 or D3, whatever it is. My problem is, is they can't, they don't stay because it's different. Because the, the rules are different. The, you know, you don't get any, like, man, you might have to get up at 6 o'clock yeah. to, to, to practice. They're strolling in at 6.05, 6.15. Well, and I think that, yeah. I, I think if you don't, if you don't, if you're just happy to play college or high school ball, then okay, that's fine. And okay. You're going to go be a doctor. But I'm making the case that don't take a don't take some money to go <laughs> to college until you understand exactly what college is, man. College is like going to the military. I tell people all the time, like whether you play Division One, Two, or Three, or NAI or junior college, you got to be a tough person yes. mentally, spiritually, physically in order to endure that. And but. Some kids may not understand that until you ha like some things you have to go through it. You got to bump I your heard. head and realize like, hey, this ain't for me. And there's a level of stick to itness that has to be had in order to, you know, go through, you know, collegiate football almost at any level. And some people going to have it. Some people ain't. And some and, but sometimes you got to go through it. Well, there's a lot of guys that I mean, you oh, let me Ryan, jump in because okay. I want to yeah. I want I want you to I want you to talk a little bit about Ryan because, you know, small you know, not big enough, not tough enough, not this, not that. And I can remember when I first heard about him, I was like, okay, let me, let me go check this kid out. I want to, I want to see what he's like. I see him and I'm like, oh, truth. he's the truth. Yeah. He can do that. So tell us a little bit about where he was. What, how was he, what was he about? You know, no, he was a student athlete. Complete student athlete, but when he got to college, what was his mindset on his way into college? What was he feeling? What was he thinking? Well, his, his, they'll he'll tell you, and the coaches even said that. Like when he went, like all he talked about was ball. He was going to go to the NFL. Like he and he said that early. Like his earliest statement when he was in seventh grade, I can see him on John Adams Field. And he was out there running sprints. This is the middle of summer. And he comes off. I'm over digging trenches to put the new um, uh, drainage in. And he comes over and he goes, Dad, I want to play Division One football. Okay, well, here's where we can go. This is what we have to do. And from that point, but you said it. And what I try to tell kids, you know, to this day is that you have to have that hard work, but then you also have to have an it factor, and that that's really hard to to see in some, you know, kids. But a college coach is a friend of mine at Division One level. He told me he said, "What you said?" He said, "College coaches have to turn on the film, and they have to immediately they can tell who the guy is that they're watching. They don't need stars or circles or any of that right. kind of stuff that you're seeing now. They turn on the film and they see it and they and they look at him, but." For him, it was all about getting to the NFL. He didn't care about the college experience or the – like he lived in the film room. He did what he had to do, training and all that kind of stuff, to get to that point because he understood that because we talked about those kind of things. And he'll, he'll tell you, I mean, we had discussions 
about, well, what does it take, you know, to do that? And then I had good mentors that I turned him, you know, or exposed him to people that would talk to him about those kind of things. And, um, you know, and, but he was just different. Coach E and I talked about like when he, he scored a touchdown the first time he touched the ball every season. Now, now think about that. The very first time he touched the ball as a freshman, he scored a touchdown. The very first, the next season as a sophomore, the very first time he touched the ball, touchdown. All four years like that. Those were, I mean, not everybody does that. Yeah. Right, right. And, and, and not everybody has that. And I think the art and the beauty of coaching is to be able to get the best out of who you have, particularly in a high school setting. Yeah. And I'm talking about high school, but you have to be able to get the best out of what you have. And you have to understand that you are not going to be coaching a bunch of Ryan switches. You're not going to be uh, coaching a bunch of grinders. You're not going to even be coaching a bunch of guys who may love the game. You may just coach guys who like to play. And you have to figure out a way to get the best out of Every single one of those guys, that's the art. Well, co to, to your point, and like you asked about Coach Edwards, so this is props to Coach Edwards and Coach Smith up there at GW. Ryan's offensive line when he was at GW, and he rushed for almost 6,000 yards, they averaged 5'9", maybe 205. That was not this month. But they, will tell, they were very smart. I mean, you have – Three doctors that played on his offensive line and, and uh, one prosecuting attorney. I mean, really smart guys, really guys that worked really well together and, and were just uh, methodical in how they were coached by Coach Smith and, and Coach Edwards. But think about that. I mean, 205 pounds. Crazy. And I'll, 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 I'll try to close out right here unless somebody had a – <laughs> has a, a, a remark to come back. I think transfer. I think transferring is a is a is a bad lesson for young athletes to do. Um, I think they lose teamwork. One of the things you talked about, Hollis, teamwork, bonding, all of that kind of stuff. I think I think winning is irrelevant to success. Um, and for the guy that looks like me, has that dog kind of mentality, wants to, 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 to get to that level, like Ryan, that, that shows up. But you can't, I don't think that you can, you can, you can take football lightly and not love it and do it. I, 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 I think it's hard. I think it's because it forces you to like it. Because if you don't, man, you you can see it. Like you see the guy, you're different. You had you had your mindset academically where you're going to go. Great success story, right? You you set your goals. You're there. You play football as a way to get you get college. You know, pay for college. Nothing's wrong with that. But you didn't just go through college like and and just didn't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like you didn't do just nothing. What concerns me, what concerns me on the high school level is we're not giving them the lessons to understand your, your journey, going to college, getting some money, putting in your time and putting it out over there. All they see right now is what's in front of them. That's what scares me. That's, that's what, that's what scares me. And the coaches to me are not reinforcing like, Hey, what are you going to do? But I, I think, and we'll let uh, delegate maybe have the last word. Uh, I, I think that the transfer, whether high school or the portal in college, is ultimately a good thing and necessary thing, because we cannot in this modern era, with and and I'll take it a, just a little step outside of athletics, with you know, with everything that's going on, where I may be in a situation where I'm in conflict with this school or this or this coach, or just may not be their offense, their defense may not be a good fit for me. And therefore, if I stay here, my opportunities will dry up. My 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 chances to do whatever I want to do 
if I want to play college or even if I just want to be a good high school athlete, that may be corrupted because this is just not a good fit for me. Or in my case, my dad sent me to a school where I was going to get a, a different academic experience and I'm going to get a different socialization experience. So ultimately, I think uh, House Bill 2820 is served sign of a dual purpose in allowing an athlete to go to a different school that may be a better fit for them that or it may be a different or a better experience for them. And we cannot landlock kids, particularly with everything that we have going on socially and what they're seeing um, in today with, you know, phones and social media. Go ahead. No, I just I agree with that statement. And I think that if you're transferring one time, I mean, we all make um, change our minds, and and uh, delegate said that I don't think fourteen, fifteen year olds know what they're going to wear to school the next day, let alone what they're going, you know, what they want to do, you know, uh, further out. So I think you give them, you know, um, they have that opportunity um, to see. But the the whole thing with just jumping from school to school to school, that's what I think is ultimately going to. Well, we're still disciplining those 14 to 15, 16-year-olds, year old, and yet we're letting them make a decision to go to a school for whatever the reason is. But, but delegate, it's your shot. Well, so it, that's the thing that makes it so difficult for us to really ha- have an opinion is we're talking about a situation that that could take on so many forms. A child may need to transfer for a plethora of reasons, one of a thousand reasons. And also in that same mix, there will be student athletes who just want to transfer to get away from the discipline, which is what I hear you saying, Carl. And and then there'll be student athletes who want to transfer because they think it's going to serve them a better opportunity. But ultimately at the end of the day, my, my uh, political decision and my my personal opinion on this is these are decisions that need to be made between the player and the parent Mm. and if a child and his parents because none of this will happen without the parents approval right uh so if a child and his parents say you know what going to school a is better for you for whatever reason than school b then that should be a parent-player decision that is allowed to be made, and and I have arrived at one time. That's a decision that should be allowed to be made one time. And prior to House Bill 2820, they could not make that decision without being penalized 365 days of their eligibility or 25% of their entire high school career. So this piece of legislation entitles them to that decision and making that decision one time. All right. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I could only try to steal another 10 minutes, but I'll, I'll let us close here. Jonathan, uh, Hollis and Michael, I want to let you know, I enjoyed have this conversation with yes. you. Hopefully we can get you back into the room one more again and uh, one more time and we can, uh, we can talk about it again. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Appreciate it, everybody. The opinions expressed on this program do not express the views of the employees of WVRC Media. No rebroadcast or modification allowed without the express written consent of WVRC Media and Let's Talk Carl Lee. This show is copyright WVRC Media and Let's Talk Carl Lee 2023. Sponsorship opportunities are available. Email Let's Talk at promessage.com or call 304-342-8131. For more information, visit wchsnetwork.com slash let's talk, or like us on Facebook, Let's Talk with Carl Lee.